Have you ever opened up the Bible looking for something that will give you some encouragement related to your personal goals in life? Or were you looking for purpose and a sense of fulfillment? Have you heard preachers quote Bible verses claiming that they promise to make you a very wealthy person, reaching your dreams of a luxurious lifestyle? I can remember a time when I would open up the Bible not really knowing how I was supposed to interpret the Bible. I didn't understand that there was an overall theme that connected it all together masterfully. A purpose behind each book inspired by God through each author. Instead, I thought of the Bible more as something we can open up and we can draw meaning from directly relating to our life. And you might say, well, what's wrong with that? And in a sense, that is what we call personal application. But on the other hand, there might be something else going on that you may or may not be aware of. It's possible that we may think about the Bible in the same way that we think other things revolve around us. This may be the result of having an existential worldview. Personally, I wasn't aware of this worldview or that there was an alternative until I read what Walt Russell said in the book, Playing with Fire. He claims that most of us in the West have this existential worldview and there is a lot that can be said about this, but I'd just like to point out a few things and look at some biblical support for it. But first, let's discuss how in the modern worldview of existentialism, we are seeking meaning and purpose as our central goal in life. We desire personal fulfillment and seek it as an individual quest. We basically make decisions based on if it has the potential to satisfy or fulfill us as an individual and give our life meaning and purpose. Seems harmless, but if we think that Everything around us has the purpose of giving us personal fulfillment. We can also wrongly think that God's purpose in our life is to create individual plans for our and others' personal fulfillment. Still don't see what's wrong with this. It may be because it is so common to hear this kind of worldview all over the place, except in the Bible. The people in the Old and New Testament actually looked for a historical rather than existential fulfillment. This is why when you read the Bible, there is an emphasis, not on individual rights or fulfillment, but on the unity of God's people. Remember, Jesus prayed for unity. Unity is important in order for God's people to work together to accomplish the historical plans God has given throughout history. And what is our specific mission as God's people today? According to Matthew 28, 16 through 20, it is to make all the peoples of the world disciples of Jesus the Messiah. Jesus set the greatest example of how our worldview should actually be God-serving rather than self-serving. If we think about it, the world is a selfish place when we operate under an existential worldview. How many times do we fail to help others because it gets in the way of our own goals and it offers no immediate personal fulfillment in return to us? Let's look at a clear example found in 1 Corinthians 8-10. through Paul wrote about how believers, although having liberty to do some things, ought not to do them if it will cause a brother or sister in Christ to sin. In chapter 8 verse 9 he said, But take care that this freedom of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Here we see a clear example of how our lives are not just about us, but that our very actions can affect others and we should act accordingly. We see this also in chapter 9 verse 12. If others share the right over you, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use this right, but we endure all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Although Paul knew scripture supports the practice of people that preach the gospel being supported by their listeners, he decided not to ask for their support, having others in mind. In chapter 10, verses 23 to 24, it says, All things are permitted, but not all things are of benefit. 
All things are permitted, but not all things build people up. No one is to seek his own advantage, but rather that of his neighbor. And verses 31 to 33 say, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all things for the glory of God. Do not offend Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I also please everyone in all things, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of the many, so that they may be saved. If we live by this, we begin to see others as more important than ourselves. We line up with God's plans for salvation of the lost. Our decisions should reflect careful consideration of how others will perceive them. We ought to care for the lost because this is the mission God has given us and because He loves and wants to reach those people by using us. Romans 14.19 says, So then we pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. And chapter 15 verses 5-6 through six says, now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus so that with one purpose and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So is fulfillment something we shouldn't aspire to have in our life? When we abandon our existential worldview for a more biblical historical worldview, we will find fulfillment in a different way. The focus of the Old and New Testaments is on the fulfillment of God's plans and not on our individual plans. God's plan is to establish His kingdom on earth and to bless the people of the world as they respond individually in faith. Throughout Scripture, we are told that this will come about through Jesus Christ's crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. As God works out His plan, we as Christians find fulfillment in our role within God's people, the church. We can be satisfied that we devoted our life serving our King in the way He wanted us to do so on the time in history He has placed us in. And we can celebrate the lives that will be saved as a result of obeying God and working united as the body of Christ. At the end of this How to Read the Bible series, I'll be doing a book giveaway. And if you'd like to enter to win a book, leave me a comment telling me what you think happens when the church is not united. Mm -hmm.